I'm just going to kind of go through some quick legal essentials for your business so that you can look through it and also see what will work for your business. One of the elements of working on your business is also making sure that the legal ABCs are taken care of, that your legal essentials are in control and there is a working knowledge of what you need and what you don't need. You can figure out the holes in your business and where you need to pour in some more love and also understand like what it needs and not just be told that this is what you need to do. So the first and foremost, we're going to talk about entity formation and whether you are starting a new business this year, or whether you're taking over a business this year, or whether you are already continuing your business and you're in year three or four of your business or year one of your business, entity formation is important and it's important to think about it if you haven't already thought about it. Now, depending on your business and the risk levels of your business and your exposure to risk and also the tax consequences, there are certain entities that you may or may not choose. Some of the most common entities is a sole proprietor, a general partnership, an LLC, or a corporation, or an S-corp, which is a type of corporation. And so these are the most popular ones, but there's also limited liability partnership, there's also limited partnerships, there's also non-for-profit, so these all exist as well. But more likely, you actually fall into the sole proprietorship or the general partnership or LLC. And if you are a sole proprietor or a general partnership, you don't have to register with the state more likely than not. Now, each state has its own rules and own set of recommendations and requirements. But in most states, you don't have to register. Now, LLC, on the other hand, is a limited liability company. You have to file with your state for an LLC. Now, every state also has different requirements for that filing. Some states require annual fees for the filing. Some states require notification to the public where there's a publication where you have to put it in and let everybody know, like New York does that. And so every state's different on their requirements of the LLC. And some states are just like pay once and you're fine. You're good to go. You just have to, you know, pay franchise taxes or some other things like that. Now, with each type of entity, there is a separate type of requirements that you need to fulfill. So there's also a different level of risk exposure to it. And there's also different levels of liability that you'll have. And there's also different levels of tax consequences. And so these are kind of some of the things that you want to really look at when you're trying to consider what kind of entity formation is best for you. Another element to look at is also your website. Nowadays, everybody's on a website. So if you're not on a website, you should be thinking about why you're not on a website and the strategy behind that, because more likely than not, you need to be on the World Wide Web. So if you have a website, you want to look at also whether you have fulfilled some of the legal requirements on the website. And some of the stuff that you really want to pay real close attention to is your privacy policy and your terms and condition. So privacy policy is required by law, and it is essentially just saying that how you're using personal information that is shared with you on the website. How are you using this personal data that your users are giving to you? Who are you selling it to? Why are you selling it? For what purposes are you gathering this information and how are you using it? All of those things have to be part of it. And then you have to make sure that you're in compliance with the GDPR or you're in compliance with the California state laws or you're in compliance with some other parts of the world that you are frequently having users come into from. Because the thing is that if your website is such where it is pretty global and you are attracting global traffic, you need to make sure that you're in compliance with the most restrictive privacy policies out there. So that way you don't have to worry about that and you are in compliance with it. Now writing a compliance and making sure there's a privacy policy there is compliance. However, 
you also need to take that one step further and make sure that you are actually practicing that compliance as well, that your business is actively doing what it says it's doing because that would be the worst, right? So you wanna make sure that your privacy policy is in alignment with what your business processes are and your business's processes are in alignment with what your privacy policy is stating. Now, that takes me to the terms and condition. Terms and condition are not necessarily required, but I highly recommend them and actually you'll see them everywhere. And the reason is because terms and conditions basically tells your user how to use your website, what they can or cannot do. And so you must have a terms and conditions. Like you want your users to come on and you want them to respect your website. Your website's like your home. It's your business. It may not be a brick and mortar, but it's a brick and mortar on the World Wide Web and they need to respect it. So what does that mean? That means that who owns the intellectual property that's sitting on your website? Who owns the pictures? Who owns the content? Who owns all the graphics and the logos and everything that you're doing? Who owns that? And how can your users use it? Can they send it to somebody else? Can they save it? And can they use it for themselves? Can they share? Can they copy? Do they need to give you attribution? What do they need to do? So basically that identifies the intellectual property that you have, and plus it tells them how they can use it. And also now it's a place where you talk about your exchange and return policies as well in your business and any warranties that you may or may not have in your business as well. And also if you are a professional or not a professional, but you might be, you know, sharing information that somebody might mistake as being a professional, like for example, you're sharing nutritional facts on your website, but you're not a licensed nutritionist or a doctor or somebody of healthcare capacity, then you might want to give those disclosures and disclaimers as well in this space. So the terms and condition is just telling the users how they can use your website, what's permitted, what's not permitted, what they should be expecting and what they shouldn't be expecting, and also any type of mitigation of misunderstandings that your user might have for your business. And usually with the terms and conditions of privacy policy, there is a box and there's an affirmative action of clicking check yes on that box as well, which is really important. You want to do the affirmative actions on it because a lot of the most stringent privacy policies globally or here require the affirmative box. And it's just a good practice to have as well. So put it in there. And so from there, from the website also, you now there is a requirement for ADA compliance as well. And so these are certain things that you want to make sure your website is compliant on the back end. So when the interface is there, your users who might need that extra assistance can use it. And it's equally available for them too, as if it were to be available to anybody else. And so some of those things might be like having captions on your videos or also the ability to skip and not have to see certain things because you can't, you're visually impaired or you can't hear. And so having the availability of that, have like an image and a text behind that image so that people can see is um, essential. And it's important to be ADA compliant because if you are ADA compliant, then you also rise up on the Google analytics and the Google searches as well. And it's also just important because you can be slapped with a lawsuit. I mean, there's been some pretty big public figures who've been slapped with lawsuits because they're not ADA compliant. And so that's something that needs to get done as well. Now, another thing that you want to look at as you're doing the legal audit is your contracts. Contracts are huge. I love contracts and you should definitely have them. It's another layer of protection in your business and contracts protect so many different aspects of your business. And it's not just a contract between you and your client. It could be a vendor contract. It could be a contract with a manufacturer or a distributor. It could be a contract with people who are working in your business as well, like your employees or independent contractors. So you need to have contracts with them. Contracts are something that provides a expectation in the business. It sets the standards of the business. There's less confusion on how to navigate if something were to go south in that relationship as well. So contracts are so essential. 
And I feel like sometimes people look at contracts as a taboo, when in reality, contracts is not a taboo, but what it really is that is strengthening that relationship to move forward with confidence. And why is it doing that? Because contracts define the relationship and it allows you to freely move and do what you're supposed to do without the unknown looming over you. And what I mean by that is sometimes people are like, well, what if we spend extra hours and we're not supposed to? Now that's hindering your performance in that contractual relationship or that business relationship. And when it's hindering that performance, you can't fulfill your verbal contractual relationship, but also it's maybe not up to par as to what the experience should be like in your business and working with you, or also what the expectations are with regards to quality of performance. And so Contracts address that, right? If there's extra hours that you're putting in, or if you're not doing something, then how do you handle that? Or if you have to reschedule or cancel, how do you handle that? You're not walking on eggshells per se, because you already have it written in the contract and it is explained. It's like your guiding light in that relationship and it tells you where to go and how to go. So contracts are very important. And by no means is undermining somebody's trust in you. But if anything, it's saying, I trust you. And because I trust you and I value our relationship, I want to solidify this with a contract so we can continue having a healthy relationship. Now, another aspect to look at when you are doing a legal audit in your business is now that you've looked at the entity formation, you've looked at your website, you've looked at the contracts. And now really another thing that a really important area of your business is intellectual property. It's the intellectual property that you're creating. It's the intellectual property that is including your trademarks, it includes your copyright, it includes, you know, your patents, your includes your trade secrets, so it encompasses all these things. And you want to have ownership of your intellectual property. And yes, inherently there is ownership there. By common law, the minute you create something and it's an original work of authorship put into a tangible medium, it's yours, it's protected. And also with trademark, if you're the first to use it and nobody else is using it, it's yours also. But really it can be hard fighting it or it can be hard protecting it if you haven't registered it. Now, by no means am I saying you need to register everything. However, if you do have a course out there that you're earning a lot of revenue on, or if you have another distinct item that is copyright protected and you're earning revenue on it, you might want to consider registering it with a copyright office because when you register it, now you've added another element of protection and also monetary repercussions also if someone were to infringe on your copyright. Similarly with trademark, if it's something that you love and it's something that you're committed to, whether or not you've launched the product, go ahead and file for that trademark because you're protecting your brand. And again, with trademarks, you have to also police it and make sure nobody is using it because the more people that use it, then you're diluting the brand also, and you don't want to do that. So you have to, beyond just registering a trademark, you have to also police it and make sure that it is being protected. Nobody else is using it. So it's really important to kind of like look into it and see what areas that you are creating content. Are you creating pictures? Are you creating blog posts? Are you creating e-courses? Are you writing a novel? Are you writing something? All of these things can be protected by copyright. And then there are a lot of things that can be protected by trademark. And trademark is your descriptive marks of your business. And so that could be a logo. That could be specific colors to your business. That could be a specific design that represents your business also, like the Burberry checks. So intellectual property is very important. And I would sit down and think about all the things that you're creating in your business and if it's copyright protectable. And then I would also think about the descriptive marks that you have in your business or marks that identify with your business actually, and think about them. And if you can protect them by trademark and even by copyright, sometimes you can protect them with that too. So I encourage you to look at these different aspects download the printable that's in the show notes and walk through that checklist. If you have questions, DM me, send me an email, whatever works for you. And I want to also hear how did your audit go? How did your reflecting back into your business and seeing what areas there are gaps in or there are holes in? And so I really want to hear. And so tell me how it went and how it was helpful for you. And I look forward to hearing from you.